Greetings, Tubadors. Hope you're well and that you've uh, started to experience something in the region of uh, what we could consider normality, you know, especially after the strangeness of the past four months. Things are slowly returning to normal. I'm still not back at work, uh, but hopefully that will change early August. So, fingers crossed. Anyway, where are we today? Well, I'm not going to look at a specific flat earther or other conspiracy minded individual today. More generally, I'm going to look at those who seem to think that just because they themselves can't comprehend uh, a particular aspect of a scientific truth, that there must be some conspiracy in place to intentionally deceive us. And the topic in question is one that's promoted by most of the the more fervent flat earth advocates um particularly the super christians now they they state that the atmosphere of this planet cannot exist next to the vacuum of space because regions of um differing pressure cannot exist adjacent to one another without there being a physical barrier to separate them um this hypothesis as, as i've mentioned is particularly beloved of uh, creationist flat earthers who cite it as proof that the the earth is covered by a crystal dome mm. they believe this not because there is any evidence for it and in fact far from it there is no evidence for it whatsoever simply because there is no dome they believe it because they think that a bunch of semi-literate superstitious bronze age shepherds um, from a middle eastern desert had a greater insight into planetary formation and atmospheric dynamics four thousand or so years ago than even the most accomplished modern day experts in the field as for the more secular amongst them um, they just watch a few youtube videos about pressure distribution and not wanting to go down the route of actual education they decided to just deny the existence of gravity and propose that the pressure differentials we observe are due entirely to buoyancy. That is, of course, wholly illogical and complete nonsense. But there is something that can prove, beyond any doubt, that atmospheric pressure decreases at a uniform rate the closer we get to space. Three words. Transient luminous events. Now, the example of a transient luminous event, um, or TLE, as they're often known, is one that everybody uh, is familiar with, lightning, okay? It's lightning that is responsible for initiating the process that forms the TLE that we are going to look at. Now, this here, this is a meteorological event known as a sprite, and they are initiated by large horizontal lightning discharges. Uh, the parent strike, the electrical discharge that we see as lightning, is almost exclusively positively charged, uh, which means that when it goes to Earth, the ground below quickly gains a net positive charge, and pools of positive charge near the top um, of the thunderstorm uh, rapidly gain a negative charge. Um, this is an extensively observed and verified scientific fact. There's no argument with that. Um, this rapid juxtaposition from a positive to a negative charge forms an extremely powerful electromagnetic field between the top of the thunderstorm and another higher concentration of positively charged ions that are way up in the lower ionosphere. Now, this rapid change of charge can sometimes cause the initiation of these sprites. Now, this is where we get to the observable proof of a pressure differential without containment. The colours observed within these sprites are dictated to um, dependent on atmospheric gases that are being excited by the charged particles generated by the lightning. Um, oxygen will give off uh, green light, most usually, as you'll see in Aurora uh, Borealis or Aurora Australis. Um, nitrogen, however, will give off red light um, at lower pressures and a violet blue light at higher pressures. Now, sprites, um, as they're called, typically occur between 
25 to 60 miles above the surface of the planet in the region of the atmosphere that contains mostly nitrogen. So you might see sort of red, you might see violet colour within these sprites, but on very rare occasions, um, a phenomenon known as a gigantic jet will appear, um, which for our purposes, you can actually regard as a kind of a, a super sprite, if you like. And these sometimes have a green cap. Now, this phenomenon was only recently discovered by two extreme weather observers, um, Hank Scheimer and Paul Smith. Some of you might be familiar with them. They are quite prominent on YouTube. Now, Paul has very generously allowed me to use um, this incredible image of a gigantic jet for the purposes of this video. Now, as you can see at the base of the jet, where there is greater atmospheric density, higher pressure, the ionized nitrogen emits visible light in the violet range. Rising through the middle, the nitrogen is under less atmospheric pressure, so the light presents in the red part of the spectrum. The conclusion then, for our purposes, can only be that in order for these meteorological phenomena to exist, there must be a gradual and uniform decrease in atmospheric pressure from, what is it, 14.69 pounds per square inch, I think at sea level, um, with no physical barriers separating the regions of differing density, um, all the way up until you get to a hard vacuum. Um, now, no physical barriers, people, but, that being said, no doubt that there are flat earth advocates who will invent some ludicrous excuse um, with no basis in reality, as uh, as they used to do. Um, it'll just be in some pathetic attempt to maintain the fantasy of their own making. So, if you are on the fence between a globe and a flat earth, whose evidence would you rather learn from? Paul Smith and Hank Scheimer, who have spent years applying a rigorous methodological study of a phenomena, um, ver verifying the hypotheses through observation, uh, documenting that study, um, placing it out for peer review by highly qualified professionals who are experts in the field, or would you trust the word of someone like, shall we say, an ex-grocery delivery van driver, um, or one of the other mundanely employed flat earth advocates with at best, a secondary school education. Just think on that for a while. Anyway, if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're already subscribed, die down. If you're not, please do consider giving that subscribe button a little tickle, hit the bell notification, and the next time that I upload a video, then YouTube will send you lovely people a email on my behalf. Now, before I go, I would like once again to thank Paul Smith for his extreme generosity in allowing me to use his image of a gigantic jet. And if any of you might be interested in some of, quite frankly, the best extreme weather footage that you will see anywhere on the internet, then I will post the links to both Paul's and Hank's channels in the description below. So, until next time. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for watching. Stay safe. If you go out, put a mask on. Be sensible, people. You know, look after yourselves. Look after each other. I will catch you soon. Until then, Holvaur.